Git is one of the most important tools that you're gonna be using in your career as a developer, but also one of the easiest. So let's buckle up and get into Git. Hi, this is the second video in our Git series. In case you missed the first one, I'm Joel from Atlassian. I work on Bitbucket and Jira. Today we'll be explaining how to get started with Git. We'll cover how to create the repo, how to move files into it, how to stage them, and how to commit them into a snapshot. We'll be using a command line interface, sometimes called the terminal. Regardless of your operating system, why don't you go ahead and open a CLI or terminal window. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is navigate to a new directory, we're gonna call it repo, and this is where we're gonna create our project. So, just as a reminder, a git repo kind of has two stages to it, working and staging. So let's get working. We're gonna start with git init. This is gonna set up the repo within that folder. At this point, you'll see we have an empty repo. Even if you had files in that directory, Git's gonna ignore them because we haven't told it to track those. But we're gonna create a new one. So let's make a file called readme.txt. Now that we've got the repo and the file, let's stage it. We're gonna tell Git that it exists. We'll do that with the git add command. This stages it for the next commit. It gets it ready to be saved, and now Git's tracking the changes with it. It tracks any modifications at all, additions, deletions, doesn't matter. And so we've staged it, but how do we know that it's worked? So we're gonna use a command that tells you the status of the system, git status. Here we can see that the file was added. It's how we expect it. But now we're gonna save it. We're gonna give it that commit. Now you can see that the readme.txt was successfully staged. It's waiting to be committed. So the commit's pretty easy. We can just say git commit, which will save this snapshot, this instance of it, and we'll add a dash M and then a message in quotation marks. That message is gonna become part of the log. It's gonna be kind of our, our little note on why we did this commit. And it will be there for all time, so let's make it a good one. All right, so now we just hit enter and we go. Committing doesn't use many resources. It's really straightforward and it's a lot like saving. So a good philosophy is to commit early and commit often. That way there's no risk of losing changes if the computer crashes, if the power goes out. Everything's safe. And now that we've committed it, we can check on it using the git log command. This will tell us the history of the repo to this point. And here we can see that our commit's there. Now this is just a single commit and over the lifetime of the project, you're gonna have hundreds or thousands of them. So how does git keep track of them? Every commit gets a SHA associated with it. This is an SHA-1 and it's basically a bunch of random numbers and letters here that are gonna uniquely identify it for later. Every commit has a SHA, and it's something you can refer back to later if you want to add to it or delete it. The log command also outputs other information. It'll give you the name and email address of the person that did the commit. It'll tell you the date of it, as well as that message. So that message is pretty important because it really will survive with the life of this commit and the life of the project. So let's review what we've done. We created a repo, we started tracking a file by staging it, and then we committed that staged file to the history. We also checked the status of the files that were being tracked and read the log. These are the basic concepts for Git. In the next video, we're gonna look at some more advanced ones.